Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here, I got another Master Duel video for you. So, uh, we're coming back to Mathmech for a little bit. I wanted to uh, not only talk about this deck a little bit, but also uh, playtest and uh, build with it a little as well, because I was actually very close to bringing this deck uh, to the Challenger Cup last weekend, and I might bring it to some future Challenger Cups as well. Um, it was pretty close for me between whether I wanted to play Mathmech or Snake Eye. I ultimately opted for Snake Eye, mainly because I had done uh, video recording and playtesting with that variant of Snake Eye uh, the days leading up to the Challenger Cup, and I was pretty confident in the build after playtesting with it. But um, the reason I actually almost chose Mathmech was because uh, this is a deck that I am extremely familiar with uh, as far as like playing it and playing out the lines, and not just playing out the lines if you go uninterrupted, but also as far as like what to do when you do get interrupted again this is a deck that i am uh, very familiar with off the top of my head and i think when it comes to deciding what to play for a tournament a lot of people will be so focused on playing whatever the best thing they have available to them is that they won't even think about playing a deck that they're like much more familiar with uh, even if it's not quite as high of a power level now obviously math back is still a, a very strong deck i'd argue still a very good tier two deck uh in comparison maybe even lower tier one uh in comparison to snake guy itself to we'll figure that out on the tier list uh here in the next couple of days but anyway um yeah so like you know, it might say it might seem weird, like, oh, you did so well with Snake Eye, and yet you were considering Math Mech. Again, yeah, because um, this is a deck that I know very, very well. And I think that, like I was touching on before, is ends up being a lot more important uh, when it comes to tournament play. Playing something that's not only strong, but also that you're comfortable with, uh, is a lot of the times even preferable to playing uh, whatever you think is the best deck of the meta, or whatever is the best deck of the meta. Uh, again, I went with Snake Eye because I was very comfortable with my build, I felt like I knew it pretty well, and I felt very confident playing it. So, you know, if you're in a situation where you're like, Ah, oh, man, I could bring my... I'm trying to think of, like, a tier 3 deck. Like, like uh, I could bring, like, my Scareclaw deck, right, to a tournament, but uh, I don't know if it'll do well enough. I might just craft Snake Guy and learn it. Um, you know, if it's, like, a couple days out, you would probably be better off going with the Scareclaw deck, and that might sound really weird, but, again, you know, it, even if you're playing a deck that is, you know, more powerful, the question is, are you going to be able to pilot it to that level? Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess, uh, um, realism and humility in admitting sometimes, like, no, you know what, I don't, I don't know this deck very well. I'm gonna go with something that I know a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, I mean, of course, that's also what playtesting is for as well. But, anyway, uh, as far as this math mech build goes, I don't think it's really that different from my previous one. Uh, if anything, I think the main thing that probably changed was maxing out on Veilus and Imperms, making that a priority in the Snake Eye meta. I think that is definitely something that uh, a lot of decks should be doing, if at all possible. I wanted to play as many Disruption cards in this build as well. Uh, kind of similar to my theory with Snake Eye, right? These decks that have one-card combo lines can often afford to play a lot of different kind of hand traps and or disruption uh, in order to make sure that they are uh, opening it as often as possible going second, right? Um, let's actually count for this build. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, let's see, 10. I count Triple Attack as a disruption card because of its ability to board break, so if Nib is 10, this would be 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, that's not bad. Ideally, I would like to have a few more. Um, I could see myself potentially going down to three, or sorry, two small world. Three is definitely not bad, like, it's definitely good to make sure you have plays if possible, but I don't think you actually need a full play set of this card, while circular is at three. Uh, if, really when, I would think, but honestly, I kind of wonder at this point, if circular does end up getting limited at some point, then obviously you just always want to max out on small world. But with three circular, I think you could go down to two and be fine. Um, that would be 16, kind of going second, hand trap disruption, what do you want to call them, cards. And I think that's probably about the most this deck could reasonably afford to get away with playing. You could also go down on defensers, like playing uh, two copies instead of the three here. Um, really, the build that I have here is geared for opening these one-card combo starters a lot more quickly, um, or a lot more consistently, rather, uh, than some other builds, right? And a lot of people have asked in regards of, like, Circular going to one, will that kill Math Mech? I don't think that will kill Math Mech at all, right? Uh, the way I see it, um, 
this deck has, again, it's all about the one card starters. And right now with three circular, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll count these as one card, even though they require cards in hand. So what did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, eleven out of forty cards representing uh, plays pretty much by themselves, or in the case of Cybers. Uh, or Cyanet Mining and Small World having another card in hand, uh, that's really, really good. And if Circular does get limited, that number goes down from 11 to 9, which is obviously less. Like, you will open your one-card plays less often, but it's not that significant of a drop, especially compared to a lot of other decks that, like, don't have one-card plays at all or have fewer than nine ways to open a one-card play. Uh, it definitely won't be too bad. I think the main thing that's scary about Circular getting limited is if it gets, like, banished, you know, um, or, like, for the long game, it might be a little bit awkward if you use your circular on turn one, uh, especially if something ends up happening to it and you don't have it for the rest of the game. But I think moving forward, even if circular does end up getting me limited, uh, this deck is still fairly good and will definitely still be, I think it'll still be tiered. At the very worst, I would see it go down to like upper rogue, right? At the very worst. Um, if this card gets banned, that'll be a whole other thing, but I do not think this card deserves to get banned. I do think it does probably deserve to get limited. Uh, it is just a very, very good card, not only, of course, in its own archetype, but just, um, in cyber stacks as a whole. So, yeah, I mean, I could definitely see Cirque going to one. I would not disagree with that, but it does not need to get banned. It's, it's fine in that regard. Um, yeah, for the extra deck, I'm not really doing anything too different. I'm still just doing the... Singularity stuff. I think last time we covered math back, I was actually doing uh, microcoder shenanigans, and um, I decided to take it out. I don't think it's funny because after playtesting with microcoder and sinet conflict, um, and for those who aren't familiar, maybe with that card off the top of their head, that would be uh, this this one right here. This uh, the level one that you can use from hand that adds the counter trap. I mean, I ended up coming kind of the same conclusion that I, I did before, right? Where I definitely don't think Microcoder and Sinet Conflict are bad. Not by any means. Um, but I think they're like a little bit win more. I kind of view them, funnily enough, the same way I view Sprite Elf in Snake Eye, right? Are they good additions to the deck? Oh yeah, definitely. Do they let you do plays that you wouldn't normally be able to do? Yep. Are those plays good? Oh, absolutely. Are variants with these cards bad? No, not at all. Do I think they're necessary? Also no, not at all. Uh, I feel that way again about both Microcoder in Mathmech and also Sprite Elf in Snake Eye. So, um, yeah, I, 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 again, after testing with Microcoder and Sinet Conflict, I did not feel very strongly I didn't really feel very strongly either way about them, honestly. I was going to say about putting them back in or leaving them in, but even as far as, like, taking them out, I wasn't like, get these cards out of here again. I, I was totally fine with them. But, you know, especially in thinking about um, engine versus disruption ratio, I think for not just Math Mech, but a lot of decks I build moving forward, I'm going to be kind of looking at this, these more conditional engine pieces and, like, I think it's best to really evaluate what a deck needs to be able to succeed, and then um, after we have not only that, but also a good amount of hand traps and disruption, uh, again, keep in mind this is our best of one meta, then I think we can start looking at if we have slots left over, stuff like microcoder or just non-necessary um, engine pieces there. So, um, okay, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about the list, so I'm going to break it down card by card, and then we'll watch some games. We're on... 3 Effect Failure, 1 Dotscaper, 3 Maxi, 3 Ash Blossom, and Joy Spring, 1 Firewall Guardian, 1 Mathmec Sigma, 1 Mathmec Addition, 1 Mathmec Subtraction, 1 Mathmec Multiplication, 1 Mathmec Diameter, 3 Mathmec Circular, 3 Firewall Defensor, 2 Parallel Exceed, 1 Nibiru the Primal Being, 2 Cyanet Mining, 1 Mathmec Equation, 2 Triple Tactics Talent, we have 3 Small World, 2 Call by the Grave, one cross out designator, three infinite impermanence, and then one math mech super factorial. And that's going to be it for our main deck. For the extra deck, we're on one cyber steel save worm, one prime math mech Laplacian, one prime math mech alan Bershin, one mirror logic aggregator, one sound migrate almirage, one lingaribo, one link decoder, one update jammer, one splash mage, one g golem crystal heart. One Trans Code Talker, one Decode Talker Heat Soul, one Access Code Talker, one Firewall Dragon Dark Fluid Neo Tempest Terahertz, and then finally one Firewall Dragon Singularity. Uh, that will do it for our deck. Let's see these games now. Okay, so our first opponent is going to be on Sword Soul. This is going to be a pretty standard going first game for Math Mech. Uh, I usually like to start with games like this if possible. I know Math Mech, especially in this iteration, has been around for a while, but you never know who's come back to the game recently, um, who might just not be familiar with the deck in general, so on and so forth. So, 
Seeing an opening hand like this, uh, this is phenomenal. This is a great turn one opening hand. Really the only question here is do I want to sign up mining or small world? That's a bit of a tough question because especially if you look at the other cards in our hand, there's not really too many I'm super keen on getting rid of here. I ultimately decided to use small world, but I think in hindsight, well, the reason I actually led with Small World is because if my opponent had an Ash Blossom, right, uh, this card does not banish the monster from hand as a cost. So that would mean if they Ash Blossom to this, um, I would still be able to sign at Mining. I mean, I would still have another card to pitch for sign at Mining either way, but so I think leading Small World here plays better into Ash Blossom. My opponent didn't end up having it, and in hindsight, if I had known that, I would have rather sign up mining discard Imperm. Okay, so opponent's got a Droll and Mockbird. I'm gonna use the call by on it. Droll and Mockbird is kind of interesting when it comes to math mech, right? So with this card, a lot of the times it's either really, really good against a deck, like really just gonna shut it down 100% uh, by itself, or actually doesn't do anything. Math mech is very nuanced when it comes to using Droll and Mockbird against it. It's very, 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 very hand dependent, right? In situations like this, obviously, where my first action is to search the circular, then Jewel is very, very good. But if I led with circular and then search the super factorial off of circular and then they had the Jewel Mockbird, uh, if I have one extender, I can still play through that. So, um, again, it's just very situational whether Jewel is good or not, but it's definitely very good against me here, so I'm absolutely going to use the called by. I guess to be fair, whether I use the Cynet or the um, Small World, I was going to be left with one of them left over kind of in my hand, right? That's why I was kind of thinking earlier, like, oh, I wish I used Cynet. It's a little awkward just hanging out in my hand. I could still use it now, to be fair. Um, and that would actually allow me to make Firewall Dragon Singularity in addition to Terra Hertz plus Super Factorial, which I'm going to make here. But in this meta, I think I actually value the Imperm more highly than the bounces from the Singularity, right? Again, if I'm expecting to play against Snake Guy, uh, and I know that Imperm by itself can shut down their uh, engine at least 50%, if not 60% of the time, then um, we're good to go. That's actually going to say that was really funny. <laughs> I saw in the comments of like uh, some of my recent Snake Eye videos, like, this deck is tier zero, it just plays through everything. And I'm like, have you never used Veiler or Imperm against Snake Eye Ash? Like, if you're shotgunning them against Diabelle, you need to stop doing that. Use them against Snake Eye Ash and then watch them just go to end phase. Um, it's very, very situational if that deck can actually play through disruption. But anyway, uh, like I said, we're going to end with the Terra Hertz plus the Super Facts. Plus, I'll just throw it on the sign up mining just in case here. Pony is going to have a Feather Duster. I'm definitely going to lead with the D Save Worm here. Um,. Normally, I like to use D-Save Worm, uh, like to save it for um, when I use Super Factorial, right, to use against the Call By, but obviously I have to protect my back rows here. I could have just chained the Super Factorial as well if I was concerned about them having a Call By, but um, because I've Imperm down face well, I want to make sure that I'm saving that if possible. So, uh, as soon as I have a monster on the board, I'm going to go for the Laplacian, especially because it's a Tenyi, because I don't want them to be able to get the Monk of the Tenyi and then have a Bounce available to them later, so... We end up sniping the, uh, well, that's a blast from the past, Vessel of the Dragon Lord. You'll notice I did not negate the Sword Soul Emergence here, even though I have an Omni Negate available with the Laplacian. Um, I didn't negate that because, you know, it doesn't matter what they get here. Uh, if it's Moye, I can Imperm it. If it's the, uh, Long Yon, I can then just use Laplacian, right? So I'm going to Normal Summon Moye, and then Show Me Taya. I'm just going to use Laplacian's effect here. Um, because that negate only lasts until the end of the turn, right? If it comes to the end of my opponent's turn and I haven't used it, then that, I won't be able to use that negate anymore. Um, so I could potentially save that, the Imperm, rather, uh, by using the negate that's only good for this turn anyway. Plus, they should be their last card is Taya. I know they don't have, like, any relevant graveyard effects they can do to come back here. So, um, yeah, it's pretty clear to me that I'm just going to win this duel. So, yeah, uh, again, it's a pretty typical math mech game. Uh, that is how an ideal kind of math back turn one hand plays out. I mean, I guess ideally you would have an extender, right, and go for the singularity, which again, we could have by like, giving up our imperm. And in all fairness, we ended up not needing our imperm. But one, I obviously didn't know that going into my opponent's turn. Uh, and two, uh, again, in this meta in particular, I very much value one monster negate over two bounces. So yeah, uh, got, of course, a few more games to check out. Let's see the next one. Okay, our next duel is going to be playing against Snake Eye. Uh, opponent's on a pretty standard build. They're still playing where are thou, which I feel like Small World is definitely just better. But, I mean, I guess where are thou isn't like terrible or anything. Alright, got another going first hand here. We are going to have a lot of going first games, but 
I don't I don't want to hear complaints about it. Not after not after all of the bad coin flip luck I've had this season. I don't know if it's just me observing it, but I feel like I've had the worst coin flip luck this season I've ever had. But it's also gonna max see me here, so it's not even really like I gained that much advantage by going first. Uh, in this situation, because again, yeah, I'm just going to get hit with the max C. I do get to see them in response when they use the 1 for 1, but they're going to have an Ash Blossom, which means we're going to have to use this Nibiru to cut their turn short. Now, again, I, I've mentioned this, I think, even in the last video, but I, I have seen people still out here saying that Nib is not good against Snake Eye, or complaining that they drop the Nib on Snake Eye and they just play through it anyway. Um, Again, you know, I, I I hear people saying that, oh, Snake Eye can play through all these disrupts. And I'm like, my first question is, are you using them at the right time? Um, because Nib especially, like, uh, you, you gotta you gotta be patient with it, right? Um, when it comes to playing against Snake Eye. Because of exactly what my opponent's doing here. They're setting up the Flamberge in the Spell Trap Zone with the Divine Temple. So, I want to wait at the very least for Flamberge to use its Graveyard Effect, right? before I activate Nibiru. But ideally, I'd also like them to not have anything in their Spell Trap Zone, which now they don't have. Thankfully, they played it in such a way where they actually use this now. So, um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna wait for the Flambridge effect to activate. That'll bring out the Poplar and the Oak, and now I'm gonna nib them. I'm gonna nib them for everything, including their life savings here. And as you can see, um, yeah, now they don't have a monster they can bring out with the Divine Temple. The Flamberge doesn't bring anything back. They do still have Jet Synchron. Like, ideally, I would have liked to have used the Nibiru before Jet Synchron, um, came back, so that way it would get banished. But the reason, another reason I'm nibiru now is because I know they had the ability to make the Barrel and the Flare, and, you know, you never know what your opponent's gonna do. Um, if my opponent made a Negate there, I would have been really sad about not being able to Nibiru, that I missed my chance, so... I wanted to do it now, uh, while I could. Again, opponent is going to use the Jet Synchron effect by pitching a Vera, which is really good for me. But then, yeah, they're just going to normal some Poplar set one. I'm actually going to use this Super Factorial during their end phase, just in case that face down card ends up being, like, call by or Imperm. Uh, that way I can summon the Alambrushin now to get the search for the Diameter. And between the Diameter search and also the Alambrush on the field with the Parallel Exceed in hand, like, I know I'm going to be able to play through Imperm or Call by now, for sure. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to normal summon Diameter here, and then opponent's going to just immediately concede. Um, I don't play a second Alambrush, so, like, ideally I would have had the Diameter negate up and then made my OTK plays. Um, but I don't think it was really that big of a deal. Like I said, if it's if the face down ends up being called by our Imperm, uh, we've prepared so that we can play through it. Uh, opponent did have an attack mode Poplar there, so really all it would have taken was for me to get to Terahertz. If I can make Terahertz, I can send the multiplication, and then Terahertz will have 11,000 attack points, which is far more than enough to battle over the 1800 attack Poplar with the field spell boost there. But Again, yeah, no, I, I think when it comes to playing against not just Snake Eye, but any deck, you just gotta make sure that you're using your disruptions at the correct time. Um, and it can be hard to know when that is, right? Um, it, it, it's, it's, you know, decks have choke points, but at the same time, it can also be very situationally dependent, such as my Nibiru here, and when I use it against their, their board, right? I use it at that exact time because of the way that exact game played out. And I think Nibiru ends up being the trickiest hand trap to use for exactly that reason. Not just against Snake Eye, but in general as well. Because it involves not only knowing the deck well and what they can do, but assessing the current situation and trying to figure out what they're able to do with the resources they have. Uh, we do still have two more duels to watch. Let's see the next one here. Okay, so our next opponent is going to be on Infer Noble Knight. Um, another deck I want to get some more practice with, actually, is Infer Noble Knight. I don't know if I could bring him to a tournament, but just in general, I think the deck is cool, and I'd like to be better uh, playing with it. Um, so yeah, another hand where we're going to use Small World to our advantage as far as, uh, you know, being able to start our plays here. Although I think Sigma plus Maxi would have actually been enough to do a combo line. Fun fact, it might not have looked like it, but like, even if I'd opened these in like three Imperms or something, this actually would have been enough. I would have been able to normal summon Maxi, Special Sigma, Link Maxi into Salomon Great uh, Almirage. Um, and then from there, oh, but you know what? Then Sigma would have banished itself. So even if I made Splash Mage, I wouldn't have a Cybers to bring back. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe I wouldn't have actually had a combo one. Uh, sometimes if you have like a hand trap plus an extender in this deck, you can actually get there uh, thanks to Salomon Great Amirage. That's why it's in the extra deck. Uh, that card has bailed me out so many times. It's like, um, 
you know, opening like Valor plus Pearl Exceed, for example, that is a full turn one combo line uh, because you normally summon the Valor Link for the Almirage. And then Pearl Exceed is easy because then you can just, uh, you have two little fours and you can just make the um, Alan Burshin get circular. Um, but speaking of Alan Burshin makes circular, that is in fact exactly what I'm doing here. So with the circular, I decided to bin the Math Mech Edition um, because yeah, obviously we already have the Sigma in hand. Uh, and we want to add the diameter off of the Alan Burshin there, so. And also, whenever I bring back a Math Mech for the rest of this turn, it's going to be the addition. I think if my opponent had a Bestial Monster, they'd probably use it a little bit later. But, you know, better safe than sorry, right? Okay, Transcode is going to bring back the Splash Mage. And then we'll just use these to make the Terahertz. I don't need to make Link Decoder here. If I, well, you know what, I could have used Link Decoder and ultimately made uh, Heat Soul alongside my Terahertz, but it's like, yeah, I might as well save it for a follow-up play. So opponent is actually going to be on this Bestials here. I thought this might have been that matchup. Opponent is actually going to be on Bestials. They're going to eat my D-Save Worm and Druid Swarm, both during my turn, which I'm not going to lie, I thought this was a little bit weird. Following up with the Wanted. Yeah, I mean, I guess I understand when you put Jerusalem on the field to send it with the original Sin, which I think is going to ultimately be their line here. By the way, I'm using Maxi here against the Diabelle because I want to get as many draws as possible in this particular uh, game state. If they opt not to give me any draws, that's totally fine with me. Whatever. Um, that means they're not winning this turn. But, um, yeah, no, I definitely want to make sure that we are taking care of that. Oh, yeah, so not, not original Sin. They're going to send Diabelle for... They're going to send Jerusalem for the uh, Diabelle there, right? So... That's going to allow them to get rid of my Terahertz. I'm going to activate Terahertz and just dump off the Dotscaper, just because, I don't know. Um, it didn't really seem like there was a reason not to. It, the defense for a Dotscaper could be the difference between me, like, living and, and losing, so... Better have it not needed than you not have it. Also, definitely want to fire off the Super Factorial now, while the original Sin is face down. Of course, being a normal spell, uh, they can't chain it or anything, so... Any chance you get to eat uh, three cards with Laplacian is always good. I might not have the Omni Negate here, but I can still snipe a card from each their hand, field, and... Well, their, their Monster Zone, Spell Trap Zone, and hand. So, hand, we're going to take the Oglier, which is a really, really good hit. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to hit the Diabelle as well as the set original Sin. Opponent is going to have a Durandel in hand to grab the Sublimation Knight. Uh, popping the Durandel now to... Well, that's part of its effect, right? Now they can Special Sublimation Knight for Squeak Knight. Squeak Knight summon itself. And now they get to link off for the Isol. So, not where I wanted my opponent to be right now. But, thankfully, we do manage to draw Max or Effect Valor off of the Max C here. So, uh, I'm going to wait, by the way. You might have noticed that I did not use Valor in response to the first effect of Isol. But I waited for the second one. Uh, this is because I know that this deck plays two of this card. And um, if you Valor the first effect then they can still summon another copy and use the second. It also doesn't really matter if they search off the first effect because they can't use that monster this turn anyway. They can't, like, summon it or use its effects. So uh, it's not going to be relevant for their combo line moving forward anyway. So, like I said, going to wait until the second effect and Valor then. They sent one equip spell, which means I think they're going to go for Ricardetto to bring back the uh, Augier that's in their graveyard. Wanted draw is a really good sign. That means that they're pretty desperate trying to dig up something that will let them keep playing, but they don't manage to find it. They are going to equip the Augier to the Ice Hold. And if they had a Max C here, I think this, I don't know what that was all about, actually. I guess, nor do I know what attacking the Dotscaper is all about. Maybe they misclicked and got a little frustrated or something? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, even if I didn't have Dotscaper live, I would still be able to bring back Sigma, Sigma for Lingaribo, and then activate the Parallel Exceed, right? Throwing down the Parallax Seed there, especially another one. I have already used Terahertz, so we're going to have to go for an Update Jammer Access Code line. So, in order to do that, I'm just going to make the Update Jammer uh, right away. I wanted to go for... Uh, maybe I should have still gone for... Hmm. Here's the thing, right? Because I don't... I also don't have the... Um, I can't remember this card's name. The Link 3. Transcode. Um, I don't have Transcode anymore, so I'd have to make g -Golem to bring it back, but, hang on, let me think about this for a second. If I had, because g -Golem is two Cyberses, right? Okay, so I could have made a 5300 access code. If I had made g -Golem using Update Jammer as a material, then g -Golem 
for because G-Golem summons G Golem and Transcode both summon to the zone they point to. So I could have put G Golem here, I would have pointed down. Transcode would have been in that zone and pointed to the right, and then yeah, I could have put update jammer here. So it would have actually still worked, but they're just gonna concede anyway, so. Yeah, I could have made a 5300 access code, but I think 4300 will do just fine here. I did actually whiff on popping the eye sold there. Which, does this card have a destruction replacement effect if it's equipped or something? Or is that maybe the Augier that was protecting it? Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Maybe it was the Augier. I'll have to read later. But uh, yeah, we have one more game to see before we finish off here. Let us go into that. Okay, final opponent here is going to be on good old branded Despia. Yeah, it's funny, I said, in, I think in the last video, that it's been a while since I've played against Brandon Despia. That's just because it's been a while since I've played, like, on ladder. Now that I've actually, you know, been playing on ladder again, definitely been running into this deck a little more often. So, I mean, yeah, this is going to be another hand where we use Small World to kick off our plays. And I know, I know, four, four going first games. But again, after the luck I've had with coin flips, or lack thereof this season, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> You've seen your fair share of going second duels for this season. <laughs> Let me have this. No. Um, yeah, no, we're just going to go for a pretty typical combo line here. I might be able to use the equation as an extender here, is kind of what I'm thinking, right? Um, or what I was thinking until we got hit with an infinite impermanence. Um, well, I can still use Equation as an extender, but what I meant was, I was thinking about using Equation as an extender to make Singularity. Now we have to use it as an extender to finish out our combo line, and we are going to be able to finish out our combo line. Uh, we're going to make Terahertz, and we're even going to have the Super Factor all be live with a diameter. Alright, Splash Mage, bring back Cirque, Circular. This time we do have to make Link Decoder because we're gonna be short one, one yeah. We're going to be short one material otherwise on making the Terror Hurts, but. So yeah, we're just gonna use Transcode, um, or summon Transcode, that'll let us bring back Link Decoder by its effect, and then we can use Transcode to bring back Splash Mage, and then go for the Terror Hurts. And this is something what I'm about to do. I just, I, there are so many games where I'm playing against Mathmech. And I see the opponent have the opportunity to do what I'm about to do, and they don't, which has been the diameter to set up the Super Factorial. When I have games where I disrupt this line of Math Mech, they'll just set the Super Fact, at least a lot of the time, my opponents will, like, set the Super Fact, and then they'll use Terahertz, but to use, to bend D-Save Worm. And then they'll do it later on my turn for Aggregator, and it's like, you could just send the diameter from your deck to the graveyard and have the uh, Negate live on your location again. It's just, again, I, I've, I've had multiple games in this last season where I play against Math Mech. They're in a situation where they can do that and they choose not to. Okay, so here, as soon as I see Branded Loss come down, I'm flipping up Super Factorial now. The reason I'm doing this now is because even though I have D Save Worm, right, um, they have the Loss up. So I know that they're going to have this um, if they have a potential Branded Fusion. This is something that you got to know when you're playing this deck, when you're playing Math Mech, is like... It's so tempting a lot of the time to save the Super Factorial to get a card, a monster, a spell trap zone, and a card in the hand. But a lot of the time, you got to use this card sooner rather than later. Um, just to make sure that you have the negate established. And again, here, if they're throwing up Branded Loss, then I'm not going to be able to de-save Worm or uh, Laplacian Diameter negate the Branded Fusion anyway. So let's we'll just get rid of the Branded Loss now with the Laplacian effect, and then, you know, we'll be good to go, right? So we're sniping the Thrust from their hand, which is a really, really good card to have hit. They're going to use the Foolish Barrel, I'm assuming, to Tragedy and bin the, uh, um, to bin the Tragedy and try to search for the Alibur here. So I'll negate that with D-Save Worm. This was a little bit of a hedge, but I figured, like, okay, if one of their last two cards is still Brand Diffusion, then I can use the Diameter Negate on the Laplacian, right? So they actually chained the Branded Opening. Totally going to let that resolve, because now I know for sure I win this duel, right? They're going to opening, send whatever their last card was, card was which was Mercurier here. Uh, Foolish ends up getting negated, right? Uh, opening got the Alibur, and then I can just use the Laplacian effect to negate the Alibur here. Not even going to let them search for Brand Diffusion, get into the graveyard, and get it into rotation. Not that it's going to matter, because yeah, now they just lose the duel. Because on my turn, I don't even have to activate any other cards, right? I can just go to battle phase, battle Laplacian over the zero defense mode Alibur, and then swing in with my 8k attack terahertz for lethal. So... There you have it, another very, very textbook math mech win. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this build overall. 
Um, I think the main thing to figure out is how much consistency I can get away with cutting, uh, i.e. if I cut a small world and a defense like I was talking about earlier, to play a couple more hand traps. Probably just ghost spells, I think, is what I would play, because they're not only good against uh, Snake Eye, uh, but also they're very good at protecting a lot of the plays that Math Mech wants to do. Um, so, yeah, definitely I think I would add a couple of ghost spells. Um, cutting a small world of defense here is the first change I have in mind for testing this build moving forward. But uh, I think that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Thank you everybody so much for watching, as always as ever. Uh, let's move now to our outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video, that means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description, one of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non Yu-Gi-Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.